Hi, I'm Sarah Jane from Natural Heating and today I'm going to show you this Wham 3740 tall freestanding cylinder stove. We've got it on, currently on live display at Natural Heating here in Attlebra. So the Wham 3740C is a tall cylinder type stove um, with a log store area below and an ash pan and a little grate in the inside. The handles are air cooled so you are always cool to the touch and never get hot. And it comes in both black and a really nice soft metallic grey colour. It's available with a top or rear floor entry. You do need to be specific and order either top or rear. It's not easily interchangeable because the top plate, when you have a rear entry, has is solid and doesn't have a hole in it. So you can't just easily swap it over. Um, basically, we have a little grate in the inside. This is a wood burner only, but it does have um, an ash box, an ash drawer underneath. And a shaker for the grate. Here's your ash drawer, which is on nice little smooth runners. And a single air control. So that air control alters absolutely everything. This is the black model, but we're going to show you a grey one and like that. Okay, so this is also the 3740C cylinder stove. This has currently got a single wall flue in it, but you'd usually use to our Malmo settings. This is just in our test rig. It's a three quarter circle. So it has a flat back, which means it can sit quite nicely against flat walls, but it's also got very good clearance distance for corners. So yeah, as I said before, the same with the black one, it's got an air cooled handle, which never gets hot. And the air control, it's a single air control, which is very simple. We've got that fully open at the moment, ready to light a fire. Okay, so when we're lighting a new fire, I like to put two small logs on the bottom and then we stack a pile of kindling on top in a Jenga type fashion. Now, this is the Scandinavian method of fire lighting and it's also called the upside down burning method. The whole point in this is that we are heating our chimney system faster. And the quicker you, hear, you heat the chimney, the better the fire pulls and you make a lot less smoke. So it's proven that by putting the kindling on the top rather than the bottom, you make approximately three times less smoke. So all I have there is our kindling pile. I've got my um, blue torch since I haven't got a match with one hand and simply light the fire lighter. And at that, I am simply going to shut the door. Now our controls on our WAM are literally just down here at the bottom of the ash pan. With WAM, you probably need to touch this less than you do any other stove because the, the controls are so, so simple. So what I have here is an example of the mechanism inside a WAM. And yeah, it looks really complicated, but it is all controlled by this very simple hematic hermetic spring which is in the inside of this unit just behind that baffle plate so what happens is as this spring heats up the stove literally is pretty automatic and controls itself so we have all these gubbins on the front and here's your heat dial so you are controlling the burn speed by how much air you let into this stove but what actually happens is once you've got your burn speed and you're at the temperature you want, this stove literally self-adjusts. So I've got my blow torch here as an example. And you see that when I heat this spring, that air control moves, I'm probably missing the spring altogether, moves itself to open and shut those vents depending on how hot that fire is. So if it's not hot enough, it opens it up more to burn off all the carbon for cleaner burning. Now, it's only been seconds since I lit this fire and already it's establishing itself quite nicely. Um, what will happen shortly, what you're seeing at the top is carbon forming because the fire's still cold and it's not yet up to temperature. So that is turning that baffle black, but it will very shortly all come back to being cream and clear and burn all that off. So this kindling, as it burns down, will catch fire to the logs. And by the time those logs are on fire, in about the next four or five minutes, you will see a circular 
ho, well, ho, mark, start to appear on the underside of that baffle. And what is actually happening is that is the carbon burning off as the, as the internals start to heat up to temperature. Because the internals on these fires are lined out in vermiculite. Um, and because it's lined up in vermiculite, that's insulated to 1200 degrees centigrade to push all the heat forward into your room to heat your space faster. So although the body gets hot, it doesn't get very hot, which is why it can go close to combustibles, because it pushes all that heat very fast out the front. So we're just going to give it a few minutes and we'll come back and see it shortly. Okay, it's only been a few minutes since I lit this fire. And if I can get close enough to it, because it is really hot already, you will see at the back through the flames, it may be better if I open the door so you can see this. Do you see that bit at the back where there's like white stripes? I've opened it to bring the flames forward. You don't want to burn stuff with the door open. But that bit there is where the carbon's burning off back at the back and clearing down the baffle. And that will be all back to being cream soon. So it's not been long at all, um, but my kindling, as you can still see, is very much still formed, but the bottom logs are on fire and you can see that baffle is clearing down nicely. So this fire has had about 20 minutes and it's now up to proper temperature and I've turned the burn for the air control down to minimum. Now, on average, you're going to get about 40 minutes per log on a good hardwood log in a nice clear burn. And the trick really just is put as little fuel as you can get away with in it for the amount of heat that you need out. Um, if you need more heat, put two logs in. You can, other than that, wait till there's no flame and the flames die right back before reloading down onto chunky red ember. We can speed it up by opening the turn dial. Now this dial for the heat control does get hot. It's the only thing I don't really like, to be honest, because the handles are always, always cold, but the heat coming out the front of this is phenomenal. So you might be able to heat it. If we can hear the air change as I've opened the air control up. But the trick with WAM is let it do its own thing. You're not gonna see a huge amount of difference. Once it's a temperature, turn the air control to a minimum and let it do it itself. It's typically an automatic fire. You're controlling how much fuel you put in. Once it's burning nice and clean, let it do its job. It doesn't need tinkered with. It doesn't need tampered with. It will put lots of heat out. Just literally put a log in, get it to temperature. Once it's at temperature, turn the air right down leave it alone and let it do its stuff and that's how it works best such a pretty fire so here you go this stove's been burning burnt the first two logs down and we're ready to reload my glass is nice and clean my air setting is on low so this is wham don't forget it's an automatic type stove it's doing its best to keep itself clean and burn as little fuel as possible. So it can do that if you let it. Wait till your fuel's gone. There's very little left. Good chunky red ember. Open your door slightly just to prime it and let it draw any gases or anything away. Nothing is coming out that front. And I'm going to put one log on the inside. That's all I need. Not two, not three. Well, you can put two in if you want, but it depends on how much heat you need. That will ignite very quickly. There's plenty of heat in there. Here she goes. And we'll be back to a nice clean flame picture just shortly. You'll soon fill that firebox full of flame. And there you are. Beautiful fires.